So first things first, I am a little sick today, so if I sound a little different or not quite like myself, I apologize in advance, but now you know why. Anyway, back to the video at hand. The battle against loot boxes has made significant headway since the issue received mainstream attention after EA's royal fuck up with Star Wars Battlefront 2. In no small part because of Hawaii State Representative Chris Lee, we are already seeing legislators from numerous US states getting involved, and we're also seeing various bills being introduced as well, which stipulate things like requiring the disclosure of gambling-like mechanics in digital and physical copies of games with loot boxes, disclosure of odds for obtaining rewards via loot boxes, forbidding publishers from adding loot boxes after the fact months or years after a game's launch, and age restrictions that go in line with gambling laws. We even saw one senator send a message directly to the ESRB to review their rating system in light of recent loot box controversy, and if they don't comply, the Federal Trade Commission is being asked to conduct their own investigation on the matter. But it doesn't end there. Yesterday, on February 22nd, 2018, Chris Lee posted a video on his YouTube channel showing us a filmed public forum of sorts in which he asked a representative from the ESA who flew down to Hawaii State Capitol questions regarding their justification for the implementation of predatory practices like loot boxes. The questions that Chris Lee asked were very simple, but as you'll see soon, the ESA couldn't even come up with the simplest of justifications for the implementation of predatory loot boxes. The ESA representative looked like a deer in headlights throughout the entire ordeal, unable to get his facts straight and unable to come up with any solid arguments. If you want to watch the full video, head over to Chris Lee's YouTube channel. What I'll be presenting is an abridged version featuring all the important bits. So here it is. Check it out. The ESA, the Entertainment Software Association of America, has been flying its lobbyists out to Hawaii. The ESA is the trade organization um, and lobbying arm of all our favorite companies, EA, Activision, Take-Two, uh, Ubisoft, basically every major player in the gaming industry. The ESA lobbyists have been meeting uh, behind the scenes with legislators, but what was really fascinating is to see the industry show up to lobby against the disclosing of odds in loot boxes bill. As far as I know, this is the first time that their lobbyists have ever had to answer questions um, on this subject matter in front of a camera. Thank you both for your uh, testimony and time. The gaming industry is now a $36 billion industry, which is um, sizable, three times the size plus of the um, film industry in this country. Um, and its rate of growth has been very rapid in the last uh, five, six years, which I'm sure provides a significant sense of pride and accomplishment, sense of pride and accomplishment to um, uh, some of these companies. Um, and we've heard from hundreds, if not thousands at this point of folks, um, stories of uh, addiction and financial harm and horror stories from families, uh, even right here in Hawaii in our own community. Is it concerning that there are significant numbers of people, and especially kids in many cases, who are ending up with problems with addiction as a result of some of these mechanisms. I think, first of all, I think that was one of the things that was recognized by the industry to create the, uh, the, the board, the review board, the self-imposed review rating board. And if, uh, and if I can recall, I think there is one category for children. Uh, uh, they, they actually have similar to movies. So, you know, you could say movies are the ESRB referring yeah, to ERSB, the ERSB, um, that they have those ratings and they have it for children. So, I think the, the industry recognized that there was an issue, and so they brought this upon themselves. I think they've been very proactive. The issue of, which has been raised here with respect to in-game uh, gambling-like mechanics, loot boxes, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, that's something the ESRB uh, currently rates? Uh, I, I couldn't answer that. I'd have to go back. Mr. Wade, are you, can you answer that question? The answer is no. The inclusion of, uh, of uh, gambling-like mechanics, specifically uh, variable reward microtransactions, do not affect the ESRB rating. In fact, the ESRB, uh, one of their few public statements about the issue has been, this is legally not gambling, basically. So one of the things that um, 
I think also the ESA testimony reflected was that this is not gambling. The UK Gambling Commission, uh, among others, seems to um, identify this, or portions of this at least, as gambling. Um, their annual report recently just found that 45% of 11 to 16 year olds are aware of what's called skins betting, where you have um, uh, products which you earn out of randomized loot boxes, which you can purchase, which can then be traded for cash. So fundamentally, that seems to be gambling, if you can cash out these <coughs> things for real monetary value. Is it not? Uh, I'm not, I cannot answer that. I cannot answer that. Um, well, let's move on. When it comes to um, loot boxes and that sort of thing, how does a player know their odds of winning something that they're paying for? Well, first of all, I think the loot box, isn't that, that if I recall, that's, that's an option. You have the option of purchasing, or you can, if I'm correct me, but I think you can get to the end game, the end, the same way without the loot box. Is that, if I'm understanding what you're... Sure. Anybody has an option not to walk into a casino, right? Well, I mean, you, you also... But, <laughs> I, I, but forgive me, I just, when you buy a loot box, um, if that's something you feel compelled to do as you're playing, how do you know what the odds are of winning something I, in that? I don't know. Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, there are no disclosures on, on the odds, so I haven't seen any at least. Are you guys aware that China has already taken steps to require odds of disclosure for these sorts of in-game mechanisms? No. Are you aware? I'm, I'm not. Is there an age the either the ESRB, as you had referred to earlier, or the industry has identified as appropriate to play games with these sorts of loot boxes? Again, I would go back to the rating system. I think the classification identifies what, 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 those, what those categories would be. The point is is that uh, the ESRB has this rating system. Right? Correct. If the ESRB were rating loot box mechanics, then we wouldn't be here. And that's kind of fundamentally the issue. You have these tactics that the gaming community is being increasingly uh, identifying as manipulative. And like I said, this isn't a matter of speculation. Like there's video out there showing the EA CEO, the publisher of Battlefront 2, which is incidentally the reason why we're here. And he's talking about how to design moments of frustration that encourage you to buy loot boxes. One thing that really shocked players was one, loot boxes directly affect your ability to progress in the game, right? Two, and this is the thing that really got people's attention, was that when you are killed in the game, there's a screen that shows you what power-ups that are available only through loot boxes were used to, uh, to defeat you in the game. So like that, you know, there is a direct line between the, the things that the CEO was saying and the mechanics that were eventually implemented, but right? Just, just for correction, when that came sure. out, wasn't that in beta form? And I think when you came back from the, from the gamers that it wasn't put in the final game? The when yes, that is correct, okay. and I believe there's been statements right, released so I, from I, I, EA I just, just in the last few weeks saying they're returning those mechanisms to the well, game. Can, where would a parent go to find out whether or not a particular game they're looking at buying um, would be to, appropriate to that site, in that the, context? To the site. To where, to where is that? The, uh, I can give you the entertainment software rating board site. I can and that, give you that address. That explains whether or not games contain loot boxes? Uh, that I'm not aware of. I don't know. But either. as you just said earlier, they, they don't rate that, so I, I can only assume that they don't. Sure. So if you're in a store here, let's say GameStop down the street, and um, you're looking at buying a game, uh, is there anything on the game box that will tell you whether or not it's appropriate in that not context? Not that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, what more needs to be said? As you saw when asked very simple questions about concerns that loot boxes may be harmful to people's mental health and livelihoods, the only response that the ESA representative provided was, I can't answer that. The representative also seemed to have no idea about whether loot boxes are being considered when the ESRB rates their games. He straight up had absolutely nothing to add to the conversation, and that's simply because the ESA has no real justification for the implementation of predatory loot boxes beyond it makes us a lot of money, and nothing to argue against the fact that loot boxes are genuine hazards that exploit 
the same psychological principles as slot machines. Now, to answer the question that the ESA representative couldn't, yes, the ESRB does in fact list in their rating system that any games featuring gambling with real currency should be rated adults only. And no one wants their games rated as adults only, since they can't be sold through any major platforms like Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, Steam, you name it. But the way that game publishers, the ESRB, and the ESA get around all that is by declaring that loot boxes don't fit the legal definition of gambling. They're essentially exploiting the fact that the law hasn't caught up with the rapid evolution of online gaming to enable themselves to continue exploiting consumers for money. But just about everyone agrees that it shouldn't matter whether you call loot boxes gambling or label it something else. The fact remains that loot boxes are a problem. They not only ruin the integrity of our game, they are genuinely dangerous for people's mental health, their financials, and with all said and done, their livelihoods. And the ESA has a responsibility to the medium and consumers that they represent to do something about harmful systems like loot boxes, no matter what their legal definition might be. Instead of exploiting the legal ambiguity of loot boxes to allow these predatory practices to go unchecked. If they actually gave a damn about games and gamers like they so adamantly like to claim, they would be taking immediate action in light of near universal complaints and backlash against loot boxes. Legal definition be damned. But they won't because they are too busy counting dollars and sending chumps like this poor excuse of a representative to give half-assed non-answers that fail to address any of the concerns raised by the gaming community. Which is why I adamantly believe that Chris Lee's current venture is so vital to the betterment of the industry. This is why I'm in such support of Chris Lee's efforts to threaten the gaming industry with government intervention. He's been approaching this in a very sensible manner too, having expressed that his goal is to get the gaming industry to regulate itself by introducing reasonable bills rather than instigating a scenario in which the government takes over the industry or anything of the sort. But at the same time, if the gaming industry won't budge despite unanimous backlash and demands from the gaming community, and despite the ever-encroaching threat of government intervention, hey, they are pretty much asking for the government to kick down the doors. The hope is that it doesn't come to that, that recent developments on the issue will encourage the ESA, the ESRB, and major game publishers to do the right thing and come up with a system that will mitigate the potential harm of loot boxes. At the end of the day, that's really all we want, a system, something to keep loot boxes in check. I mean, just about everything else has a system in place. Cigarettes require disclosure of their harmful nature and have an age restriction. Alcohol requires disclosure of alcohol content percentage and they have an age restriction. Gambling requires licenses, approvals, and enforce age restriction. And even things like food has organizations ensuring that they meet certain standards and that ingredients and contents are fully disclosed on the packaging. Loot boxes, on the other hand, have no system of any kind. There is nothing that's keeping publishers from exploiting them to implement whatever underhanded scheme that they want. Hence why shit like Battlefront 2's attempt at a loot box progression system was able to happen. So, gaming industry, develop a system with proper regulations for manipulative practices before it's too late. Neither of us wants government oversight when we have got such a good thing going, but these days, your bullshit reeks enough that a lot of people are willing to risk siding with the government this time around, especially when you've got someone like Chris Lee, who has been on point and reasonable and honest with everything he said and proposed so far, unlike the gaming industry. Anyway, these are just one man's thoughts and opinions. I'd love to hear your take on all of this in the comments below. With that, I would like to end this news update. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy my content, consider supporting me on Patreon. It is completely optional, but even donating as little as a dollar a month will go a long way in helping this channel grow. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out. <laughs>